Hey guys, today is Black Friday and GearBest.com is doing some pretty special promotion on their site. It's The sale ends uh, in I believe about two days. It should go through the weekend. 14% off electronics. There's a whole bunch of different stuff on there and I'll try to put a link down below for you guys uh, for this particular Black Friday sale. Pretty cool. So anyway, let's get on the review of the ET125. Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis and I have a new quad here for you today. We're going to check this one out. This is called the ET125. There's a few different models of this one out there. Uh, I believe a 100 and even smaller. So I've been waiting for this one to come in for quite some time because it looked like a giant whoop. We're going to take this one outside. We'll do some line of sight flying with it and then we'll do some FPV and I'm going to test it on 2 and 3S for you. The motors are not rated for 3S so if you fly this on 3S make sure that you don't have them come down super hot because you can burn these up and damage or destroy them. So going to be totally safe on 2S. It does come with a really nice 2S battery inside this case and check out this case. This is probably the biggest King Kong case that we've had so far and there's plenty of room in here. You can get this guy in there with the prop guards on uh, and a bunch of different batteries in there. So let's go ahead and put this one on the bench. We'll take a little closer look at it on the bench. I'll give you some spec talk and then we'll go outside and we'll do some actual flying, line of sight and FPV. All right guys, here we go. This is the King Kong ET. 125 edition that I have here sitting on the bench and if you're wondering if you watch the other reviews there's three of them total in this series uh, at the ET series there's the 125 there's the 115 and there's also the 100 series if you're going to ask me which one to buy I would probably get the largest one um, it is kind of big to fly indoors but you can fly it on stabilized indoors and it's really actually very precise and uh, actually a lot of fun to fly indoors too so um, in the winter months coming up, you'll be able to fly this one when it's snowing outside and wet or rainy. And then on the nice calm days, you can take this one out and uh, you can do some ripping on 2 to 3S. Now, it does have that Pico BLX, like I was telling you guys about, the F3 flight controller. And it has Betaflight 3.1 on there. Um, you can upgrade this one. The only drawback about this one um, is that the USB port is kind of hard to get to because if you look on this side right here, what I had to do is I actually cut the canopy away so I could get my USB driver in there, my USB cable in there. Um, and that's easy to get in there once I did that, but I just took a pair of snips, trimmed it back a little bit. I also uncoiled the receiver cable in here. There's a variety of ESCs that you can get with this one. I believe you can get one with uh, DSMX for Spectrum guys. You can get the plug and play version that's no receiver and you can also get the FlySky FS it's an RX 2A receiver um, on there for you FlySky guys not to be confused with FR Sky. now it did come with a red JST connector on the back of there uh, for 2S and I don't know if you should really run it on an XT30 but I did it anyway and you know what on 2 and 3S I didn't have any flips of death down to the ground and it seems like the voltage was nice and high um, um, so that might be a safe option to do for this particular quad if you wanted to run an XT30 on it. Now underneath this little canopy right here, there's three screws that will pull it off. And on the very bottom, this is not a receiver. If you're trying to bind this up because you see that little plug right there, this is a little button that's for your VTX. And this one's switchable. It's switchable between 25 and I believe 100 milliwatts. So 16 channels on 5.8 gigahertz. And you can actually get out there pretty far on 25. This is a really nice transmitter. In my goggles, my field of view was, was decent with this. I feel like there could be a little more tilt in the camera. So if you can get yours to tilt up just a little more, that would probably be uh, work out a little bit better for you. But speaking of the camera, this is an 800 TVL CMOS camera uh, with 150 degree field of view. So it's different than like a run cam micro. So um, not as good quality, but the colors are super bright and super saturated in my uh, video, as you'll see coming up. And on the very back of this quad, you have that video transmitter antenna coming out the back, just like that a little dipole here, and it works great. Um, some of the other dipoles that I've used recently haven't been so great but this one has a really good signal coming back to the goggles now just below this canopy over here on the left is where the buzzer is so you can activate the buzzer on a switch on your transmitter also I noticed on this frame it is a carbon fiber frame on the bottom it's a unibody you got a little piece of foam here and uh, pretty classic 
King Kong style way to put the, the battery on the bottom. They used a rubber band, um, they usually do, but this system, the setup works pretty well. And we've probably got 3K, three millimeter carbon fiber on the frame. And the prop guards actually worked pretty well. I'm not a big fan of the prop guards, as you guys know, but it's kind of fun to be able to bounce off a tree branch and keep flying uh, or bump into the ground and just keep going like I did do uh, during my flight. And it does say that these are unbreakable prop guards. And in my test, I didn't have any problem uh, with durability with these. They didn't bend in. And then, you know, when you go back to take off, it has one side of the prop guard is hitting a prop, which has been kind of a problem with past uh, prop guard setups on quadcopters. These are actually pretty durable. I was impressed with these, so I'm going to give a thumbs up for the prop guards on here. If you want to take them off, make sure you use shorter screws back up into your motors right here, because if you use these same ones after you take this prop guard off, you're going to run them up into your motors and damage them. So uh, just letting the new guys know that little bit of information. And also just under this canopy on the bottom of this stack, we have a 10 amp ESC, 4-in-1 ESC running multi-shot on here. So if you want to upgrade this to D-shot, you're going to have to do that using the CLI prompt um, to get this all up to date with D-shot 600. So I just left it on multi-shot and it did just fine. I didn't have to do anything to get it going. Um, set up my switches and I left the PIDs at the default. So we flew this on default PIDs, uh, left everything stock for you for the exception of the connector. So uh, the only change there, I would recommend doing that by the way, um, if you're gonna fly this one. Now this little button right here, like I showed you before, this little button is how you change your channels. Long press to change the bands, short press to change the channels, uh, and a medium press, I think three seconds to change to different bands there. Um, so you can do that, and it's also switchable to 100. If you wanted to open up this case, cut this piece of heat shrink off, and you can solder two tabs together just underneath this rubber band uh, to make it 100 milliwatt. But for now, the 25 milliwatt's fine because this is a proximity flyer. You're gonna fly it in close up and personal. So um, I don't know if you even really need the 100 um, to go through all that trouble to do that. It just seems kind of uh, excessive. But if you're having signal issues, you can do that and have a solid signal in 100. Now I'm just gonna show you this box real quick. Let's just go ahead and open this up. This is the original JST that came on it right here. I'm just going to set that in the box, but let's go ahead and set it in there and then we'll close it up. Look at that. It goes right in there with the prop guards. That's pretty sweet that it does fit in there with no problem. And if you want it to fit even better, you can take this box of goodies out that came with it. This is a manual for the XM Plus which shows you where everything goes on there if you decide to solder up one later or bind it. It shows you where the bind button is up here on the top right. It also gives you some information about how to set this up in Betaflight. Uh, also how to get some receiver bound up on your Tyrannus. This is a D16 receiver by the way. It shows you a little graphic. And this is pretty decent. This is all in full color so I'm pretty impressed with that. One thing that I did notice up inside the canopy and I've got to tell you guys about, I added a little piece of hot glue on the camera on both sides inside the canopy because this is another one of those quads that has the camera just kind of glued to the canopy and it does have two side posts right here that they glue onto but um, I just wanted a little more strength in there because I figured I'd get to the field have a couple hard bumps and then the camera would fall inside the canopy so um, but the cool thing about this one is there is a connector piece so if you were to brown out this camera you can just plug another camera right back in and you're good to go so you have a separate VTX and camera on this one. So uh, just get the standalone replacement camera for this if you ever brown it out and no big deal. And by the way, guys, you can get up to eight batteries inside this. And if you pull this little piece of foam out here, you can probably put some props um, inside this little section right here. So you can see there's a cutout for each one of these slots. And that's pretty nice that they include that. But I love these boxes from King Kong. They're always pretty durable. And I usually keep a few of these around. I have the smaller ones, like for the 110 GT, and I'll put props in these and make this a props box um, to carry along with this guy. But these are 2.8 inch props on here, and I do prefer these larger props over something like the 2035s. These tend to fly a little bit uh, smoother, and they're actually pretty quiet for how big they are. Now these King Kong motors, 
They are the 2204, and they're 7,500 kV. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of guys probably wanted the 1106s on this, but the way this is flying, it flies perfectly fine for what's on here. So no need to upgrade or change anything. I think it's a, um, a decent flying quad. I had a lot of fun flying it. I had a ton of range since I pulled this out the top and put a little zip tie right on the top of the canopy. I was out um, more than a football field away with this little quad. But I guess one other con about this might be this, the fact that it doesn't have Betaflight OSD on here uh, or any type of OSD <laughs> as a matter of fact. You have no OSD on here. You can do a low voltage beeper. I would probably suggest doing that so that you don't damage your battery uh, with this little ET125. But if you wanted my recommendation on which one to get, I'm gonna go ahead and post links for all the different sizes on there, the 100, the 115, and this uh, 125 for you guys to check out, but they all have the same power system on there. So um, my opinion, get the one with the larger props. It's just gonna fly a little better. So let's go ahead and go out to the field and uh, let me show you how this little ET125 flies. Okay, here we go. Wow, pretty, actually pretty nice and zippy on 2S. Just playing around with some throttle punch here. And I am in acro mode right now, so I can do a flip very easy to see this one actually because of the prop guards has a nice big profile on it look at that very nice try some forwards really fun to fly uh, line of sight actually wow really easy to fly even an acro the tune's pretty good cool i think this is going to be a great flyer I've seen a lot of good reviews about this one, so pretty excited to test it out for you guys. You know, I'm a big fan of those 2.8 inch props and this type of setup. I really don't think it needs the, uh, the larger motors on here. I think the um, 1104s are fine. If you go 1106, you might just get the wobbles. So let's go ahead and set this one down and uh, get it up in the air for some FPV action with this little guy. Oh, oh, oh. 